Good morning. Good morning. It is Thursday, Thursday, June 13th, 2024. That means it's July, August, September, October, October, six months till my birthday. <laughs> right? December's coming. Yeah, so I hope you have your coffee. This is my hay cup from Cy Robertson. I went to Duck Commander when I was in the South. And I just thoroughly enjoy this cup holds coffee well, reminds me of my good adventure down there. And uh, good morning, Tanya, and good morning, Doreen. So good to see you this morning. Good morning. So yes, make sure you have your coffee. Good morning, Rob. Maybe it's lunch and you're eating lunch and you're watching, so welcome. Come on in. Uh -huh. Yes, so good morning to y'all. Good morning, Olwyn. So good to see you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, one more. Here you go. Mm-hmm. That's a really good cup of coffee. Good morning, Karen. I'm trying to remember where I got these beans from. I think they were given to me. That's a really good cup of coffee. Uh, yes, so here we go. So good morning, Donna. Um, this morning, we are going to unpack the memory verse from this week, which is John 3, 36. So all week, all week, all, all week, I've been practicing memory verses, not necessarily this one, uh, but other ones. Um, why? Because I want to hide God's word in my heart. I want you to hide God's word in your heart so that you might not sin against God. Because sin separates us from God. And when we separate ourselves from God, we can't hear what he's saying and we don't come under his authority for him to guide and direct. And then we end up causing even more problems in our relationships towards others and it just gets messy. Uh, and, so, and so last night at prayer meeting, uh, Tony Hamilton brought a really great devotional about guarding our mouths. And, and as she's saying, it, I'm reminding myself of all of the verses that I know about guarding our mouths and the words that we say and where those words came from. And that came from hiding God's word in our heart. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Paul and Sue. So it is important that you hide God's word in your heart. It will give you life and peace and goodness because in the middle of the day, you'll be thinking about something and whoop, up it comes. So hide God's word in your heart. Um, so this week, it is John three thirty six. Well, I guess this is like, no, this is this week. Good morning, Velma. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever does not obey the Son does not have life, for the wrath of God remains on him. Right? Uh, it's So the letter, because we're going through the alphabet, it's W. It's John 3, 36. Whoever, has, um, whoever believes in the Son, um, NIV, here we go. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for the wrath of God remains on him. Good morning, Laurel. And so uh, this says, I love it because it's an all-inclusive. All-inclusive. It says, whoever. Now, what's interesting is I saw a recipe that I really liked, and I was told I could get the ingredients at Costco. The issue is, I don't have a Costco card. I cannot get into Costco. The only way I can get into Costco is uh, by going in under somebody else's card, going with someone else. That's the only way I can get into Costco unless I pay for the card myself, right? Which I'm not going to do. I don't go that often. But I have to have a card to get into Costco, which somebody else paid for. This verse says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Belief is not just, well, I, I know he exists. Um, yep. It's not what it means. Because there's lots of evidence to prove that he exists. It's the doing, right? It's the doing. I'm going to come back to the, the Costco example in a minute. I want you to hold on to that. But whoever, whoever, so whoever, it's open to anyone, believes. It's not just, oh yeah, Jesus existed. It actually means to follow him. There's this act of doing, right? There's, um, it's not only a knowing, but it's this change of heart with the desire to follow. There's this act of following, right? So whoever follows, whoever believes in the Son, 
So this is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is, right, um, God incarnate, okay? Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. So whoever follows him, whoever follows Jesus, God incarnate, will have eternal life. That means when you die on this earth, that your life will go on living forever in heaven with God. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Um, that's not just wearing a name tag. I'm a Christian. It's a, a walking it out. Whoever does not have, whoever does not obey the Son. So see, often this word of obey and believe are intermixed, but it really is this change of heart that I'm going to do what Jesus says I should do. And remember, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He calls us into a life of fullness. Um, whoever, um, but whoever does not obey the son or NIV says, whoever rejects the son will not see life for the wrath of God remains on him. And we've talked about the wrath of God before. And we often go the wrath of God, but it is his perfect justice. When we talk about the wrath of God, it is his perfect just, justice. It is the, the wage of sin, right? Um, for the wages of sin is death. The justice of sin is death. Um, and that's in God's hands to decide, right? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Um, those wrongs that you've experienced in your life, I will look after them perfectly, right? Old Testament, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, right? There's this element of perfect, perfect justice. And God is just. So he's going to look after the justice. The thing is that our sins, our unbelief, merit God's perfect justice. And the only way that God's perfect justice is met in our life isn't based on what we do, but based on what the son does. Just like I can't get into Costco unless I go with someone else who has paid the price. I cannot get into heaven unless I go with someone who has paid the price. And that someone is Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how much, how many good things I've done. It doesn't matter, you know, how much money I've given away. It all comes down to, do I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If, I, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. It's this idea of turning. Like even the thief on the cross, you're like, yeah, but he didn't really obey. But there was a change in his heart. He, you know, his, his um, compatriot, the other thief was, all, was mocking God, was mo mocking Jesus. And he's like, do you not know who this is? Like, and then he turns to him and Lord, say that I'll be with you today, right? In paradise. Tell me, save me, right? There was even in that moment, there was a change of heart declaring who God was and that they were actually receiving the punishment their sins had warranted. But Jesus could save them for all eternity. And uh, there's this passage in Revelation, Revelation 20, that said, then I saw, uh, so this is 2011. Um, then I saw a great white throne and him who, who was seated on it earth and sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. The books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done and recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead and that were in it and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire and the lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. I know. Warm and fuzzy, right? On a Thursday morning, right? We don't like talking about hell. We don't like talking about the, the lake of fire, but it says the wages of sin is death. And, and, God has made his way very, very clear um, that Jesus came to forgive us 
of our sins. Jesus came to give us life to the full. Jesus came to free the captives from their life of sin and worry and doubt and fear and insecurity. Jesus came to give us peace and to renew us, right? The Lord is close to the broken heart and saves the crushed in spirit. Like Jesus came to do all these things, but we choose not to follow him because we think our way is better than God's way. And so often we need to return to the Lord and say, Lord, I am so sorry that I chose my way over your way. I got myself into a pickle or I've really messed this up. Can you bring healing and restoration? And the Lord is so good because it says when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he will never let us go. Like there's, whoever believes in the son has eternal life, period. Doesn't say if you mess up, you're out. God knows we're gonna mess up. He knows we're gonna mess up. He knows we're gonna mess up. But if we, through an act of our will, say, Lord, I wanna follow you. Would you meet with me? Would you forgive me? He says, yes. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever hears my voice, opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. There's this idea of wonderful fellowship and deliverance and forgiveness, but we have to be willing to surrender our lives to the Lord, to do the things that he's asking us to do. No longer our way, but God's way. And we will be completely forgiven. And our names will be written in the book of life. And we will be set free from the penalty of sin. I love what uh, Romans 8 says. Uh, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. His, the, the wrath of God, the payment for our sin has been satisfied because of Jesus. He is our way into heaven. But we have to believe, according to John three thirty six, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. And whoever does not obey the Son does not have life, for the wrath of God remains on him. The bill has not been paid. I'm so glad that he invites everyone. So if you're listening today and and you have not confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, you can do that. You are the you, right? You are the whoever. And you might be thinking, but I've done, I deserve hell. Well, the thing is we all deserve hell. No, 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 you don't understand what I've done. You don't understand the mess I've made of my family. You don't understand the hurt that I've caused. Jesus said, whoever whoever comes to me, right? Whoever comes to me, I will forgive and set free. You are the whoever today. So I would invite you just to say, Lord, I believe in you, but I'm not really sure that you can deliver me. I'm not really sure you can forgive me. I'm not even sure I I warrant your forgiveness. But would you teach me about who you are? And in his goodness and grace, he will because he loves you. He loves even you. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness because he already paid the price. We just need to believe. Turn away from your sins. Turn to God and your sins will be wiped away. This is such good news. He is so very good to us because he loves us. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, period. Whoever does not obey the Son does not have life, for the wrath of God remains on him. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's very clear. We just need to be willing to put off our old self and step into this life that Christ has called us to. And it's open for everyone. It is open for everyone. Let's pray. Lord, would you take your word and would you hide it in our heart that we might not sin against you? Would you take this word 
that we've learned today and would you remind us that we have been given life and life to the full. You have paid the price. You have paid the entrance fee into heaven because no one who has sinned is worthy of heaven. But because of your son, you have washed us clean. You have paid the price. And by your payment, we can come. And so, Lord, would you lay on our heart today this deep reckoning of our spirits? For those of us who know you, Lord, would you give us this deep sense of peace and this desire to see you? And Lord, for those of us who have not surrendered our lives to you, Lord God, would you quicken our hearts for your, to your truth? Would you draw us unto yourself that we might experience your peace and your forgiveness and the life you've created us for? Come Holy Spirit, we pray in your name. Amen. My dear friends, it's going to be a great day. Why? Because whoever, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Life to the full, good life. And the Holy Spirit in us, leading, guiding, directing us, perfecting us. Right? It's going to be a great day because the Father loves us. Jesus is with us and the Holy Spirit's going to guide us. Whoever has the Son has eternal life. All right, my dear friends, this is good news. So on this beautiful day, remember to like, share, go outside and help your community experience Christ. Bye.